We were late to the Bitcoin party. Is Bitcoin a speculative play for you? You know, what do you see it as? Is it sound money for you? We wouldn't put a lot of money into it. We would just have it be a speculation. You know, give me a reason. Why should I be in gold and, and silver? The dollar will just continue on down in the trend it's been in for over 50 years. With the Ukraine war, with all the tension we're having, that will keep gold up because it makes people very un uncertain. Gold could end up peaking at $6,724,000 levels. Is that crazy? Gold's been going up since the late 60s. If you have gold, I mean, you could still be averaging in. We don't think it's too high to get in. What's driving this gold price? What is it for you? The central banks have been the ones keeping gold firm. It's starting to wake up the West and that of itself is a big future demand. Do you think silver could outperform gold? Hi, this is Daniela Cambone. Welcome back to the Daniela Cambone Show here on ITM Trading. I am absolutely thrilled to be speaking with uh, Marianne and Pamela Aiden today. Uh, they are the considered two of the most influential and well-known investment analysts, writers, and lecturers in the world. I've known them for a very long time. Um, I'm sure many of you follow uh, their coveted newsletter, the Aiden Forecast, very closely. Well, now I have them in the flesh. <laughs> Pamela, Marianne, so good to see you after oh such a long time. It's really I know. Long time. It's, it's good great. to see you. Great to see you, and it's nice you, to be with you today. You both look fabulous. I mean, I follow you on social media, and we'll talk about that uh, later at the end of the interview. <laughs> but like I said, you guys look great. I know you're just thriving. Thank in you. Costa Rica. I hear the birds chirping. How is life? <laughs> it's good. Uh, it's very complain. good. It's yeah, we have no complaints, really. Well, definitely no complaints on the gold front. So let's talk about the gold price, because I know I felt I've been covering gold for for what, you know, close to 15 years now. You guys have been covering it way longer than I've been covering it. <laughs> so how are you feeling uh, with gold, as we're speaking at 2375, by the time this airs, we might hit 2400. Who knows? How are you feeling with these prices that we've never seen before? How does it feel to be in gold right now? Well, it feels really good. And we've been, it's been building up actually indirectly, uh, the gold price this year when it started taking off in mid February. But before that, we could feel, um, uh, a, a reason why it wants to move. It feels like it was ready to jump up. So when we do our analysis, we do every day and we do our indicators, we're saying this is going to be a big, a big leg up in the bull market that's going to be um, start the beginning of the stronger phase of the bull market. And indeed it did. And that's been really exciting for us because it really did. This is a leg up from 2000 to 20, almost 2400 where it is now is um, is the is the leg that is that we think is the re-verification, the bull market's getting hot. Now we're in a strong phase of the bull market. So it's not going to go back into sleeping mode for a while. We don't think that's going to happen. Corrections, yes. but well, um, well, that's a really good point because, uh, you know, oftentimes I'll, I'll, you know, meet people on the street or whatnot, and they're always like, when should I, you know, when's a good time to get into gold? Or they thought like they thought 2000 was too high. And that's exactly the point. Like there's, you, you you shouldn't be waiting. Like, it's always a good time to get into gold, correct? That's right. Yeah. No, it is. And in fact, uh, it sounds crazy because it has risen so much, but it's still early in the bull market the way we see it's going to be a long lasting one and it's going much higher. So if if you have gold, I mean, you could still be averaging in at these higher prices. And for a newcomer, we don't think it's too high to get in. So I, mean, I appreciate you saying that, especially for the newcomers, because um, in your one of your latest editions uh, of the newsletter, you say, and if this bull market ends up gaining at the same rate as the last two big bulls, gold could end up peaking at the anywhere between sixty seven hundred and twenty four thousand dollar levels or somewhere in that area. Now, some might say twenty four thousand. Is that crazy? No, yeah. it, it sounds totally crazy. Yes. And we even know when we write that it sounds crazy, but it's not because 
what we did is we took the last, as you know, gold's been going up since the late sixties. So it's one big, big bull market. But within that, there have been two big bulls, you know, with the ups and downs. And the last two bull markets, if you take the percentage gains um, and apply them to the current bull market, those are the numbers that we come up with. So it has happened before. I mean, the first bull market was the big one that took gold from like, you know, the late $35 an ounce up to 850. But the second bull market in which we call, you know, the bulls within the big bull. So the second bull market that started in 2001 and went up to two thousand until 2011, that one gained 600 and some percent. So that's the one that if it's just like that one, it would be um, $6,700 in the current one. So not to say it's going to repeat exactly the same, but it could. The point is it has a very open upside and we're going, we, we should just, I said, buy and hold time for the next few years. And we think that this could um, really get hot. This is the beginning of hot, very start. It's telling us, yes, it started. And so this is what we're most excited about. Yeah. Like, and don't you think it's interesting how, you know, with these price targets, well, when, when we talk about these type of crazy, absurd, you know, huge price targets, like a hundred thousand, 200,000, it's become a uh, very part of the daily narrative in terms of Bitcoin. So yeah. why yeah. can't it, you know, be 24,000, the new norm for gold? Yeah, no, and that and we agree. That's a high number. But yeah, no, you're right. It's a, it's wide open. Right, right now, we just look at it as a wide open, great investment, and what it does what it does for the next few years. But we feel it's in a very strong, strong phase that we haven't seen yet. So this is this is what's exciting to us. Yeah, uh, is this um, stronger phase that started? So talk to me a little bit about what you're seeing. Um, about what's driving this gold price. What is it for you? Is it, you know, the central bank buying? Is it really China, Asia, period, the story? Obviously, the crisis in the Middle East, U.S. dollar. What is it for you? Well, for starters, of course, the central banks have been the ones keeping gold firm because they've been buying, especially China. And then now you added the, in recent months, the consumer, the, which is like another central bank, they're buying too, and that's been keeping it up. Also, the, so the West... Uh, the West, meaning the U.S. and and the other West, is um, they haven't really been in the gold price. They haven't believed in it, and so it's been a, 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 a central bank and other people with outside of the U, the U.S. and North North America, really, and and Europe. And so, but now you see, hey, wait a minute, they're looking to. We're starting to see hedge funds. We're starting to see um, a lot of different big companies. So starting to think, well, we better start buying some gold. It's starting to wake up the West. And that itself is a big future demand uh, that's just starting on, on this level. So that uh, combined with all the other reasons why gold should rise, like it should have risen sooner, many people will say, with the Ukraine war, with all the tension we're having. But the tension now has really gone up 100%. So that, of course, will keep gold up because it makes people very un uncertain. Uh, very insecure. And of course, there's the a lot of people. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I was going to say a lot of people ask, you know, wouldn't a rise, uh, wouldn't a, a rise of this size coincide with a terrible crisis? Does yeah. gold need a terrible crisis to hit that next leg? Well, it doesn't need it, but it, it usually does coincide. Like, for example, um, in the 70s, it was massive inflation. And then interest rates ended up going up to 20%, as you know, many may remember. And normally to get to those super high levels, it could be just massive Chinese citizens buying because their, you know, their values of their apartments are going down. They, they love gold. They're not into anything else. They're putting all their extra money in. But then if you go to a crisis, which is very possible, um, we've heard everything from the Third World War, you know, the, the blow up of the Middle East, the end of democracy, the end of the Western civilization as we know it. The Any of those um, year. Well, yeah, the presidential year and the divisions mainly, not yeah. 
not just because it's a presidential year, but the, you know, the, the chaos and what all could result from that. So all of those reasons are potential crises, especially the mm -hmm. debt crisis. The debt crisis is very serious because we already have a snowball effect where the, just the interest on the debt is the second biggest expense that the U.S. government has, and it's greater than defense spending. And as more money is spent and the debt grows, that interest payment is going to keep growing, and eventually that's going to create a financial crisis. So not that we want to see all these things happen, or we don't even know if they're going to happen, but the thing is, any one of those could scare people to the sense that they want more security and they want to buy gold. Yeah. In fact, just the, just the, um, the rise that from zero rates to where they rose in the last year, that scared a lot of people. And what it's really doing is going from unreal low levels for the last almost 10 years to a still a low level, but higher than, than any, many people have ever seen in their lives. And they're scared stiff of that. Now it's been coming, they've been coming down, but still this is just a, um, because the Fed kind of is calming them down, but it's still, there's still inflation way back there. It's, it's hitting us every month and reminding us that it's growing. And then you see all the commodities rising and you see all the prices rising. How can we not keep having inflation? Um, and so this is the stickler right now is uh, for the Fed and for interest rates, because we think that interest rates are on a mega rise from, from here after this whole, um, this is what's going on right now, this back and forth of, of um, is it or isn't it? Eventually we think rates are going up, which that it really changes a lot of things. Yeah. And if that changes um, the stock market, it changes the, the bond market, it changes, uh, well, that mainly it'll be probably caused from this higher inflation in the background, even though they'll try and cut it down. But the inflation is really the stickler in this right now. And um, so this, this year, but this is going to be affecting all of the markets. And in the end, when we do um, compare interest rates and, and gold, uh, like saying T-bills, which are the ones that have been staying at move with the Fed, um, this they are saying that they, te they tend to move together mainly. It's amazing. If you look at it, we have it in our last, latest issue. They tend to move together. There'll be times they don't. And many times when they move together, like in the 70s, it had a high in inflation behind it. So that that super high interest rate wasn't really affecting gold one bit. They just rose together. And um, so not to say only that, but they declined together for 20 years from 1980 to 2001. They had this slow decline together and then they rose. So they do move together. Many people don't quite realize that, but they do. They tend to move together. So you think this inflation fight is far from over? I mean, I I I would agree with that. I mean, who 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 thinks anything is affordable these days? Exactly, like it's it's sad, but yeah, everything's so expensive. Uh, we see it here down here too. It's things are just expensive, much more than in just two years ago. And we don't see anything going down in the real world, like the basic materials that cause you to have to raise your price and and your production. Like the, all these things are rising. The the resource sector is rising. You have higher steel, higher copper, all the building materials are more expensive. I, um, so everything is rising yeah. and not just gold. We're, we're seeing all the, the whole commodity sector yeah. rising and that is what affects inflation. So you're feeling it in Costa Rica as well. You see it at the grocery store. Tell me a little bit about that. Just I just find it fascinating since you both live there. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, what happened here was weird. I mean, I paid strawberries this morning, 10.99, you know, oh, so I'm gosh. thinking like, what is happening? But, but um, yeah, tell me how much are strawberries in Costa Rica right now? Well, I haven't looked lately, but they're not cheap, uh, but they're not as good as yours, though. I must admit, strawberries aren't really so good here as far as sweet and tasting. But what's good here are papayas, all the, all the tropicals, right? So um, your tropical fruit will not be that expensive because it's local, but anything that's been coming in or anything that's like, um, like imported. It's just imported for sure. And right, uh, so exactly. what, happened, what made it as, as expensive here is the dollar has less value. If you can imagine, there's more dollars coming into the country. And that, so there, the cologne is going down. I mean, the dollar is going down 
And so, but, but the price goes down to that. And so, um, it makes us as dollar income much more, much more expensive. And a lot of all the tourism, they are really feeling it because um, the, uh, the Kelowna is expensive. So I guess before we move on from gold, because I want to talk silver, I want to talk Bitcoin. Uh, you know, you've been doing this newsletter for 43 years. So congratulations on that. Thank you. How does, you know, does it feel different this time around? I mean, like I said, 43 years covering uh, commodities, gold, silver. Does this time feel, I mean, price aside, does it feel different? Yes, it does because it's, um, you just can feel it. I mean, that sounds silly, but you, you know, you do follow a market for a long time. You get to know it, you get to know its movements, but we follow all of the markets. And so, but when something's really kind of like gearing up to go, you, there's a lot of signs and you do feel it. And there's a lot of hate things happening, not just with the market behavior, but as we were mentioning, outside factors. So when the outside factors and the technical factors come together, that's really kind of an ideal marriage between two important things that are going to drive that market up. And it could be stocks, it could be gold, it could be interest rates. So this time does feel like one of those times. And plus, it's the whole world that's so involved. It's before it was like in the 70s, it was just the US. And in 2000, it was the beginning of globalization and all that. But this now is trying to stop globalization, but it's there, whether you like it or not. And um, even though some people are trying to break off on that, but now it's just a very mix, a, a mix of uh, visions of people upset. Everyone's upset. And um, for one reason or another. Yes. And that that um, that could cause a lot of problems on its own. No, it just uh, let's talk. Oh, oh, sorry. No, just I was going to mention at the same time, it's interesting because, you know, you have an inverted yield curve for the past year and a half. You have other signs that a recession may be coming and you know, everyone's talking inflation, but we could see something like a recession. And of course, they'll do everything to stop it, perhaps bring interest rates down for a few months for the, you know, during before the election, let's say, and then inflation will pop up again. And so will interest rates. And that's kind of the way we're seeing it. Let's talk silver now. Do you think silver could outperform gold? Definitely. We think it's just started. In fact, it's been underperforming, as you know. It's been just sleeping away. It has been uh, like nothing. But that's the way it is. It always has been in the past. Once it, we call it wake up, like once it starts shooting up, it usually has the uh, the resource behind it, I like copper, using copper as the example of the resource. When that starts rising and gold's rising, then silver is definitely the winner because it, it, it gets it from both sides. It's, it's a precious metal and a, and a commodity at the same time. So um, for that reason and other reasons, we think um, silver is the better investment for the long, they're both great, but we think um, having some silver and holding it is uh, you're gonna get a lot more percentage gains. So own a mix of gold and silver? Yes, yeah. definitely a mix. That brings up to mind another question. When you know, we often hear you own gold, uh, not to get wealthy, but to preserve your wealth. But I'd love to hear from you, like when, when folks ask you, you know, give me a reason, why should I be in gold and, and silver? Well, yes, um, preserving wealth is always important, especially in these times. But, but yes, it always is good to have some for a reserve base, but also we do it for an investment. Definitely, um, definitely as an investment. Right now, it's an investment. And it's a safe haven, so it's both. And um, we, because we see that there's going to be a lot of advantage in holding it, and um, for for the investor, you'll gain, you'll have profits. Yeah, there, it has great profit potential for those who want to sell, you know, near the top, ideally. And then in the meantime, you always have your kind of core base metals that you keep for for um, protection. Yeah, and then we also like physical and we also like ETFs. ETFs are a great way to get involved without having to worry where you're going to store it, 
where you, where you're going to put it. Um, so if you don't want to worry about that for a, a little bit, yeah, if you like, we like physical for that reason, but also ETFs are very, a very practical way of buying gold and silver. Yes. Let me ask you, because I find this interesting. Um, you like Bitcoin, correct? Yes. Well, you know, what happened is that ever since it became more recognized and became an ETF yeah. and became more like a, its own asset class formally, ever since then, we said, yeah, this is it. This is the time that before it was always like, like the same thing. How do you buy Bitcoin? Some people don't know. They don't feel good about it. But now you can buy it on the stock exchange as an ETF. That just changes the ball game, And that changed the ball game in gold back in 2005. And when it, when it got an ETF, the GLD, uh, that, that like um, caused a good big boost to the bull market. So we think that it, well, it, it financializes it, right? Yeah. It becomes like, Safe. Yeah, heck, I can buy it on the stock exchange ETF. That makes it really attractive. Now, is Bitcoin a speculative play for you or do you really see it as, you know, what do you see it as? Is it sound money for you? What is it for you? Oh, not sound money. Uh, that's still to be seen. Uh, but but as an investment, yes. Like a, to make money, yes. But not. But it is a speculation. We wouldn't put a lot of money there. Right. Because it, it moved the like it moves like right now to go from 65 to 100 and you know but but i wouldn't we wouldn't um we wouldn't put a lot of money into it we would just have it be a speculation but danielle just so you know we were late to the bitcoin party and like a lot of people were involved and we were still being conservative so we've been kind of conservative all along and like pam said once it became more you know mainstream then we went ahead and we had a lot of subscribers that were saying, well, what do you think? And we're saying, well, yes, we think it looks good, but, you know, be careful and all that. And so now we just have gone ahead and recommended it. And um, and I think it still has a lot of potential. I think it's going to do very well. I guess just I, I, to wrap here, I'd love to get your thoughts on what you think is going to happen uh, to the U.S. dollar, obviously, we've spoken so much about how the U.S. dollar has been weaponized. Countries turning away from the U.S. dollar. Talk of you know BRICS perhaps mm -hmm. ushering a new a new currency uh, to compete with the U.S. dollar. Just curious to get your thoughts overall on what you think will be the future for the U.S. dollar. Well, we think the dollar is going to continue to fall. <clears throat> at which it's been doing since 1971 when it went off the gold standard. It has fallen um, like something like 75, 80% against the major currencies. And it's fallen even more so against gold. And so we, we don't see with the debt, you know, perking up, getting bigger, all the, the financials could not be worse for the dollar. And as you mentioned, you know, people um, globally are moving away from the dollar. The, the reserves of dollars is going down in other countries. So for all of those reasons, we feel that the dollar will just continue on down in the trend it's been in for over 50 years. Well, I'd like to add that this is the major trend. But um, you see, we had the last five years, we've seen a very stable dollar and, and we've seen... <laughs> Uh, and we've seen a very stable dollar because there's nothing like the dollar. Everyone will accept it around the world, whether you're a, you're beginning a brick or whatever you're doing. The reality is that's the currency everyone uses. And that's what has been the custom. And that's what still is the custom to use the dollar on any transaction. And, you know, when you as a tourist, you can take dollars. You don't think, think of that because you are a do in the dollar world. But us, we will always take dollars. You could never take a cologne and go leave Costa Rica. Never. And like that, like most countries, they can't take their currency anywhere where you can. And and everyone knows they want a dollar. Like in Latin America, they use the dollar as a safe haven for sure. And that, that's when a big investment for them is to have the stability of a dollar instead of their own currency. So, yeah, there's a lot of need for the dollar. So it's to be seen if it ever changes, but it hasn't yet. So it could stay steady. It could just go flat and stay steady for for a while longer. But the mega trend is down, but that doesn't mean it's going down this year or next year. Yeah, but it could be flat. Um, it could be whatever. But it's it's that's where the mega trend is. 
I'd love to just get your thoughts on life here for a second, <laughs> uh, because a lot of folks in the Daniela Cambodia audience are interested in having, you know, plan B's or plan C's. That's a big reason perhaps they're buying gold or silver. Many are interested in, you know, getting a second passport or having a residency, you know, outside of the US or Canada or Europe, um, just having a plan. So you both have been living in Costa Rica for how long now? Well, many, many, many years. Many years, many years. Many years. 50 years. <laughs> oh, wow. So what, <laughs> no, yeah. I was going to say, what, what caused you to think, you know, it was time to move there and well, see, our case is different because we didn't come for financial reasons. We came because right. our mom was here. And so we came to you know we visit. Even when we were little, we would come to visit. Uh, and we have relatives here and cousins and what have you. But our mom at that time was living here. We came to see her and we were offered jobs. And we were young and we said, okay, that'll be kind of exciting. And we thought we'd stay a year. And meanwhile, we wow. got involved with the markets. We met um, um, just a, very few people were involved in the markets in those days, especially in Costa Rica. So, but we ended up getting one thing led to another, and then we just ended up staying here. And then we had got married and we had kids, and we ended up this became home. But in the meantime, we have seen so many expats come flooding in, especially I. I could say in recent years, but it's been ongoing ever since we came here and they have come to have a second home. They've come to yes. diversify. They don't want to just have a place in the States. They love Costa Rica. Costa Rica is a beautiful country and it's, it's stunning. got st st something for everyone. Like if, if you're a hiker, if you're a swimmer, if you just the natural beauty. So there's a lot to do. Many, many beaches. Yeah, gorgeous beaches and mountains. Just things, you know, volcanoes. It's got everything. So people come and many people that we know that we're friends with, they live half the year here, half in the States or in, in Canada. And, um, and others just ended up staying like we did, but, you know, for different reasons. But there are a lot of expats here. And so safe. Yeah, it, it is. is. It is safe. It, um, I, anything, it's not 100% safe, but yeah, it's safe. It's a base of a base. We feel very safe. Like we can drive alone to go all over the country, and I have never any fear of anything. I know. I, it's, yeah, and that's, uh, you can't put a price on that. So I'm happy for both of you. I mean, I follow your beautiful life and your beautiful <laughs> families. I mean, everyone in your family is just gorgeous <laughs> so on uh, social media. So we're friends. We're obviously friends on Facebook, but I was chuckling offline with the sisters because uh, my parents are those Facebook parents that will add all my friends and comment on their pictures. So anytime I see my parents commenting and they comment in Italian, of course, uh, you know, I'm like, oh, what are they up to? So I think it's adorable that you now have a friendship with uh, my mom and dad. Oh, that is yeah, so great. Yeah. And you're, and you're, well, I hope this part you, you have beautiful twins. They are just gorgeous. Thank you. Thank you. They are turning for tomorrow. So I should wish and say happy birthday to my beautiful Alex and Jordan. You'll watch this one day. Uh, many years from now. So happy <laughs> birthday, boys. I love you. Oh, yeah. And I love you, ladies. You guys are fabulous. Keep oh. rocking it. Keep writing. Keep educating people. And I hope to see you at a show soon. And we'll go out with, oh, you know, too. Fun, all the girls. Definitely. We'd love it. And we love you too. Awesome. Great to see you. Great to see you. Thank you so much. And as always, I invite uh, everyone watching to sign up for a Calendly appointment. Um, it's a strategic session with one of my wonderful colleagues over at ITM Trading. If you have any questions about uh, gold, silver, or the content we're covering, do it. It's a great, great experience. That's it for me. We'll see everyone soon. Bye-bye. It's been great.